Good morning, boys and girls. Uh, it's Miss Roseanne here. I have your last Sunday school lesson. Woohoo! Um, I'm really excited just because y'all know I like to see you face to face. Um, and this will be our last recorded Sunday school lesson. So the next time um, we have Sunday school after this Sunday, which is September the 27th. Oh my gosh, where did September go? Goodness. Um, Anyway, so the next time after this Sunday, we will have Sunday school at church. Get excited, because I am, and I know y'all are too, because you can only do so many of these, right? Anyway, so Sunday school for Sunday, September the 27th. Um, we're going to talk about the first sin, and I noticed, um, y'all know at the beginning of the month, our literature changed a little bit, and as I got to reading our lesson the other day, um, usually we have like four Sundays to do our application verse for the month. Well, with the new curriculum, it only gives us three Sundays. So, I was kind of like, what? Wait a minute. We're supposed to still be memorizing Genesis 1-1 because I was real excited about asking y'all that verse. So, even though... This Sunday is going to start a new application verse. On the first Sunday of October, I'm still going to ask you guys what Genesis 1-1 is because I know you guys will know it. And I really want you guys to tell me what it is. Okay? But anyway, um, so today our text is from Genesis chapter 3 and it's verses 1 through 13. And the title of our lesson is The First Sin. And a lot of you may know what that is, and some of you may not. We're going to talk about Adam and Eve, okay? Um, our objectives for today, sin entered the world through Adam and Eve, but we have God's word to help us fight against the devil's temptation. We are to be on guard against Satan's lies and attempts to deceive us, okay? Our application verse is Psalm 145, verse 8. Let me turn to it really quick. I like to read it out of the Bible because sometimes it um, shortens it a little bit. So I want you guys to get the full verse, okay? Um, Psalm 145 verse 8 says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. Wow. That's another really good verse. I think you guys could memorize that one too, okay? Um, and our family theme is Sin Enter the World. So we're just going to kind of go through, um, if you're my explorers group, your field notes are going to look like this. It'll say FN4 at the bottom. And I will put the answers on this with the, um, and put it in the comments under the link. Okay. So I'll have all the answers. No, go in the kitchen, please. I'm sorry, guys. Um, yeah, I'll have this in the comments with all the answers, okay? Because I know last time I said we would go over it at the end, but I'm trying to keep the videos a little bit shorter. So, what I'll do is this is what we have, and um, I'll just have the answers wrote on this with a picture in the comments under the link that'll be on Facebook, okay? So, check that after the lesson so you'll have the answers for that. If you are the adventure group... Um, Yours are going to look like, it'll have to be like that on one side, that on the other. It'll have FN-4, but then the back, I can't remember if it's going to have the that in the triangle or if it'll look like this. Okay. Either way, if it's this blank one, I'll have this picture in the comments. Okay. So that's your field notes. And I hope you guys have been using your little, um, the little discover, discovery guides, the adventure guide and the explorer guide that's got the funny bones of jokes because it has like a little devotion you can do every day through the week that kind of recaps our Sunday school lesson. So I hope you guys have been doing that, okay? All right, so um, we're going to see if we can figure out some different warning signs. Um, I'm just going to show them to you in the book because I didn't actually get mine out. What do you think this means? Fire. 
maybe not fall. Caution stairs, and that says says danger, and I think that's a dog maybe. So maybe like there's a dog there and you need to be careful. Okay, so why do you think warning signs were created? Why do you think warning signs were created? Maybe to help us keep our eyes open, you know, like if there's a dangerous situation or something like that, do you think that's why they were created? Well, what might happen um, if we were to ignore a warning sign or if we were to disobey the warning? We might fall. We could get burned. We may get bit by a dog. Um, sometimes we don't have a sign, but we're told about the warning, right? Has anyone ever told, told you not to touch a hot stove because it's hot? I'm sure all of you have been told, don't touch that, it's hot. I think I do that at least once a day with my kids. Don't touch it, it's hot. I'm sure your parents or grandparents or whoever's at home with you, I'm sure they tell you that too. Even though there's not a sign, we know we shouldn't go, oh, well, let's see, they told us not to touch it. I'm gonna touch it. Let's not do that. Even though there's not a sign that says, do not touch, I'm hot. Somebody told you not to touch it, so you shouldn't touch it, right? We were given a warning, so if we chose to disobey it and touch that hot stuff, what's gonna happen? We're gonna get burned. Then we're gonna have this nasty blister and we may have to have all kinds of stuff done to where that blister was so our hands or our fingers can get better, right? Or our arm or whatever might touch it, right? So today we're gonna learn how Satan tricked Adam and Eve into ignoring God's warning and the consequences that came as a result of their disobe diso disobedience. Whew, my words today, y'all. Sorry. All right. Um, so listen, we're going to just go dive right into our lesson. If you have your field notes, you can look at it as we talk about this stuff. Um, if you don't, just listen. And like I said, um, in the comment section under the link on Facebook, I'll post your field notes with the answers, okay? All right, so this... Earlier this month, we learned um, God made the first human, Adam. He planted a garden. God planted a garden in Eden. He put Adam in charge of it. Um, God gave Adam specific instructions that he could eat from any tree in the garden except for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. What do you think would happen if he ate from that tree? What do you think would happen? Let's read Genesis 2, 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou, sh thou shalt surely die. Hmm. So you think like, if he was to eat from the tree, he would just oh, drop dead? Do you think that's what happened? Do you think that's what would happen? Well, what does he mean? Let's find out. So at this point, the world was perfect, okay? Unfortunately, all of that was about to change with one choice, okay? When it says that thou shalt surely die, we were, we were meant to spend our life in the presence of God. And then they made this one choice that caused sin to enter into the world. And um, sin causes death. And ultimately, when we die, if Jesus is not our Savior, we will not spend eternity in heaven. We will ultimately spend forever in hell. And that's why it's so important that we make the decision on our own time to ask the Lord into our heart and spend our lives trying to honor Him obey his commandments, um, and make our life pleasing to him, okay? So in Genesis 3, um, I'm going to read 1 through 5. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle 
than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Hmm. Do you kind of see how Satan twisted that? Their eyes were open okay. They did know good and evil, but were they like God? No. They were sinners. Okay? So... The serpent was Satan in disguise, okay? And he was trying to trick Eve. He wanted her to doubt not only what God said, but also his motive. The serpent directly challenged what God had told them. He tricked Eve by saying, God knows that when you eat the fruit, you will understand more about how things are and will be wise like God. Satan was trying to get her to disobey God. He couldn't make her, but he could tempt her to do wrong. I want you to really listen. Sometimes we're given choices and you're always going to hear, well, Satan made you sin. No, Satan didn't make you do that. You chose to do that. Satan can tempt you. Satan can dangle it in front of you and it paint this beautiful picture because let me tell you, he can paint some pretty stuff. But it's up to you to be grounded in the Word of God to know when Satan is dangling that temptation in front of you so you can make the choice to tell him, Satan, get behind me in the name of Jesus so you can ultimately make the right choice and go God's way, okay? Adam and Eve had never felt tempted before. And Satan wanted them to always feel tempted to leave God and go their own way. Eve had a choice to make. Should she obey God's rule? Or should she believe the serpent and eat from the forbidden tree? Genesis 3, 6 tells us when Eve saw the fruit, it looked so good. Mm, mm, the best looking apples she'd ever seen. That it might taste good. It would make her wise. She took some and she ate it. Oh no, Eve. She gave some to Adam and he ate it too. Did Adam have a choice? Yes, he had a choice and he chose to disobey God's rule. This moment of disobedience is when sin entered the world. How do you think Adam and Eve felt? How do you think they felt? Look, it breaks my heart to think that they had the whole world on their shoulders and it's their fault that they chose to disobey God and ultimately they're the reason sin came into the world. I can't imagine how they felt. Like I would feel horrible. Like if you ever like disobey your parents or you disobey your teachers or your friends or like your grandparents or anything like that, like it's, it's a pretty bad feeling like when you know you've disobeyed somebody and you're like, oh man, I did that. Like, I am so sorry I did that. But at this point, do you think sorry got them out of it? No. Let's read and find out. So the Bible says their eyes were opened and they felt shame and sin for the first time. Satan did tell them their eyes would be open, right? So he was right about that. Until this point, Adam and Eve, they were naked, but they weren't ashamed. But now, because of sin, they were ashamed. So they ran, they hid, they sewed fig leaves together to make coverings for themselves. Okay, so like immediately, they knew, oh, we're not supposed to be like this. Or, oh my gosh, you're naked, let's go make, we gotta get clothes, we gotta do something. So they ran, they hid, and they made coverings for themselves. Okay? 
God didn't intend it to be that way. Adam and Eve heard God walking in the garden, and they hid from him. Why do you think they hid? I know if my kids ever get into trouble, sometimes they tend to hide, or if they've done something they know they're not supposed to do, they tend to run and hide because they know they're gonna get in trouble. Well, they probably knew they were gonna get in trouble, right? They knew they had done wrong. The Bible says God called out to them, Adam, where are you? God knew where Adam was, but God wanted Adam to admit his sin. Before, before there had been no fear, no shame, no need to hide from God. What do you think Adam said to God? Really think about that. What do you think Adam said to God when he was like, Adam, where are you? I think he was going, oh no, Eve, he's calling for me. What do I do? Do I answer him? Like, is he going to find me? Because I can't tell him what I did because we've messed up. Like, we've really, really upset him. Adam told God he was afraid and hid himself because he was naked. When God asked Adam if he had eaten from the forbidden tree, what did Adam do? Do you know what he did? He blamed his wife. When God asked Eve what she had done, she blamed the serpent. Instead of taking responsibility for their sin, they chose to put the blame on someone else. Sin entered the world through Adam and Eve. Sadly, guys, you know, we can make, um, we can make those bad choices, but then when those choices come about and we're confronted with that situation, it's our responsibility to admit, oh man, I did eat from that forbidden tree. God, I'm so sorry. Like, what, what can I do? And even Eve. Yes, God, I ate from it. I chose to disobey you and listen to the serpent. I mean, that's all they really had to do. But they didn't. This was the first time they had ever had to deal with this. And sometimes it may be your first time to ever have to deal with being confronted about something like that. Um... The, consequence for the, the consequences for their actions was that they were removed from the Garden of Eden and they became separated from God forever. Mm. That probably hurt, right? They were in this Garden of Eden. They didn't have to worry about anything. They had all the food they needed. They had all the water they needed. Everything was provided for them and it was perfect. And because Eve made a choice and Adam made a choice, Sin entered the world, and because of that, they were thrown out of the Garden of Eden forever. Okay? It seems strange to us that it was a talking serpent, which is a snake, that led Eve and Adam to doubt and disobey God. Why was Eve not afraid of a talking serpent? Remember, they lived in a perfect world, and they had never experienced fear. Okay? Okay? They didn't know it, and they didn't experience it. So, in other words, she didn't know to be afraid. She was just like, oh, hello, this snake's talking to me. So, in her childlike innocence, she did not find a talking animal strange. Angels are God's special messengers who worship him constantly in heaven. I'm going to give you a little background story on Satan. Um, because a lot of people wonder, you know, why was he so mean? Why did he... Why is he the way he is, okay? This is a little clip of kind of why Satan has become the angel that he is. And angel is really not a good word to use, but in, you'll learn why. So angels are God's special messengers. They worship him constantly in heaven. Satan was also known as Lucifer. He was one of the angels, so Satan was one of God's angels. We don't know what all happened, but at some point Satan began to wish he were in the place of God. When the angels worshiped God, Satan wanted the angels to worship him. He wanted their praise. He was not content with the job that God had given him. He wanted praise for himself rather than everybody praise him. 
He was filled with pride and rebelled against God. Satan chose his own way instead of God's way. He wants us to choose his way over God's way too. He is called the father of lies. He is very sneaky and knows how to tempt you to sin. Remember, sin is anything what we think, say, or do that goes against God's way. <clears throat> Even Jesus was tempted three times by the devil. But what did Jesus do? He quoted Bible verses, which is why it's so important that you memorize your application verses. So when you are in a situation where the devil is trying to tempt you, you have that verse up here that's going to help you tell him to leave you alone. Okay? He quoted Bible verses and he did not sin. That tells us how important it is to learn God's word. Okay? So for our application verse this month, um... The Lord is gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. And this is Psalm 145, verse 8. God is the creator of the world and has all authority. He created us with, with a free will or the ability to choose whether or not we will obey him and follow his commands given in the Bible. This verse gives us insight to God's character he could have reached, reacted totally different to Adam and Eve's choice of disobedience. But what characteristics do we learn about God through this verse? I'm going to read the verse again. The Lord is gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. Gracious, compassion, slow to anger, mercy. You remember those four words? You've got the verse, okay? What is the struggle of every Christian? We struggle with wanting to choose our own way over God's way. Satan tempts us in three different ways. The desire of the eyes, the desire of the flesh, okay? And the pride of life. When the serpent tempted Eve, she saw the fruit was pleasant to the eyes. It was good to eat. It's the desire of the flesh. And it would make her wise. It's a prideful life. She was tempted in all three ways. And guess what? She gave in. Satan wants to lead us in the wrong way. He is extremely crafty. And he knows how to tempt us. Satan confuses and twists the truth ever so slightly so that we begin to doubt God's words are true. Is it wrong to be tempted? Not really, because it's our choice. We have the power to choose. And we're going to be tempted. Guys, you can be tempted every single day, every single minute. But it is your choice to make the right one. The devil can't choose for you. You choose, not the devil. Okay? So being tempted is not a sin. Giving in to temptation is. And that is reflects on your choices. So when sin enters the equation is when you chose to act on that temptation. Does that make sense? This is very hard to understand, so that's why I'm kind of going slow. Temptation is not the sin. The choice of going through with that temptation is sin. If you're tempted with something and you're like, uh, no, because the Bible says, uh-uh, I don't think so. That's not sin. You're tempted and you're like, ooh, yeah, let's go do that or let's do this. But wait a minute, the Bible doesn't say that that's okay. Oh, it'll be all right. We're going to do it anyway. That's sin. The moment you choose to do what is wrong is sin, and it can happen like that, okay? So it is wrong when we give in to our temptations, and when we sin, we should confess it to God and ask for forgiveness. Guys, it's so important that you realize that. Um, all it takes, you have to admit that you did it. 
that's very hard because our human self, when we mess up, we don't want to admit that we're wrong. We don't want to admit that we've done it. But it's so important to get that forgiveness and to be cleansed by his blood. We have to admit, God, I messed up. I did. I lied to my mama. I am so sorry I didn't lie to my mama today. I haven't lied to her. I'm not going to say ever because we've all told white lies to her mother. But today I've not lied to my mother. Anyway, um, it's important that we say, God, I messed up. I told that little white lie. Please forgive me. And then it's important to go to that person and say, hey, I lied to you. Will you please forgive me? That's the catch. Ask God to forgive you because he's going to forgive you no matter what. But it's also important that you go to whoever you've hurt and ask them to forgive you as well. And you tell them that you're deeply sorry and you don't do it again. Okay? 1 John 1, 9 tells us God is faithful to forgive our sins. We're not strong enough to fight temptation on our own. We need God's help and we have it in his word. Learning and memorizing verses from the scripture and from the Bible, they help us stand strong in our fight against the devil's attacks. And that's why it's so important that you that I challenge you guys to memorize those verses every month, okay? So on your field notes, if you've got the um, adventure one, this is going to be for you. So listen up. So you got the first sin. Adam and Eve committed the first sin. Okay, and because of their choice, no one can match God's standard of perfection. It would be easy to say that Adam and Eve only had one rule to follow, and they blew it. But the truth is that we all disobey God. We are all sinners. That's Romans 3.23, okay? God is, our God is our standard, and each one of us, we fall short. The good news is God gave us his son as redemption for their sin. Jesus died on the cross to take the punishment for sin. It is only through the blood of Jesus that we can measure up to God's standard and receive forgiveness of sin. Through Jesus, we can be forgiven of our sins and have eternal life. All you have to do is admit that you're a sinner, believe that he died on the cross and he rose on the third day for your sins, and confess that he is your Lord. That's what it takes to become a follower of Jesus, okay? So around the warning sign in those verses... You can use that to remind you to choose God's way when you're tempted to lie, complain, or be unkind to others, disobey your parents or grandparents or whoever you live with. God's way is meant to protect us from Satan and ourselves. When, when you have a choice to make, remember what God has said. Love him more than the sin and choose his way. Satan wants to lead you in the wrong way. He wants you to hurt your body and mind with bad things that will destroy you. So your next step is to be on guard against Satan's lies and attempts to deceive you. But remember, when you do sin, trust in Jesus for forgiveness, okay? That's a lot to take in today, guys. But um, this is so good and it's so important to remember. Um, you can be tempted every single day, but it's ultimately your choice whether you want to follow through with that temptation or not, okay? If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can write them in the comments. Um, I will have the field notes in the comments on the link, um, under the link on Facebook, okay? Because you'll see this on YouTube. And remember, this is our last Sunday for a video. Um, the first Sunday in October, which will be October the 4th, we'll be face-to-face. -face, and I can't wait to see all you guys. Um, I hope you guys have had a great week. The weather has been beautiful, and I'm so thankful that fall is here and all things um, cooler weather and bonfires and everything else. Um, so I hope you guys have a great Sunday, and I'll see you at church in just a little while. See you later. Love you. Bye.